we're here to talk about hyperspace, right? So let's bring him in here. Let's welcome to the show, Cam, the co-founder of Hyperspace. What up, man? Welcome in. Hey, what's up, man? Thanks for having me. Of course, dude. It's really great to have you on the show. Um, you know, we've been watching all the developments with Hyperspace Avox and everything seems like it's going really good. So we're really excited to have you here. And, you know, frankly, we don't get to talk to a ton of NFT projects on this uh, stream. So really cool to have you here, man. Thanks for joining the show. Yeah, of course. Of course. I, I love the, the intro. Was, that was a perfect song choice. I'm glad I got to walk into that song. You know, I'm I'm glad you did too, and I'm glad you said that because our uh, CMO was in the chat trying to give me a hard time for playing that song too much on the stream, which admittedly <laughs> I do, I do. But that's one of my favorite songs, man. And Mac Miller, RIP, man. That's like that's the guy. It's you know? so good, and the beat the beat switches like throughout the swap the song are so good. Dude, he was so brilliant. Like, we're just gonna take a quick second since since Cam brought this up. Mac, we lost Mac. Like at, he wasn't even at his prime yet, man. You know what I mean? And I, I got a lot of friends who were friends with him um, because uh, I, I was good friends with some of the Taylor gang guys back in the day. And uh, man, the stuff that he was making, I was really excited to see what he was going to come out with. So we definitely lost him too soon. But thank you for the compliment, man. We'll definitely play some Mac Miller for you coming up a little later. But um, since we got you here, you know, we always like to talk about the people behind the projects. Right. Okay. And so. I just wanted to start with kind of like, what's your professional background? You know what I mean? And how did that bring you to crypto? Yeah, so I'm a, uh, I am grew up in New York. Um, so I'm a, a native New Yorker. Are you too? Yeah. Oh, dude, awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. I live in Minneapolis now, but yeah, New York originally. Yeah. I lived okay. in Brooklyn um, briefly during the 2010s, um, okay. but I moved back here to Minneapolis. So yeah, New, New, right. let's go New York. Yeah, let's go New York. Um, so I grew up there. I was lucky enough to go to uh, MIT for, for undergrad. Awesome. Um, and between those two things, that's actually how I met my two of my co-founders. So um, Johnny is one of my co-founders. We went to high school together. So we've known each other for a long time, like at least 12 years now. Uh -huh. um, and then Santosh, my other co-founder, uh, we met while we were at MIT. And I think for a lot of us, like a lot of us at MIT were really geared towards, it was like tech and finance. Like those sure. were really the two main career paths. And like crypto is kind of the, you know, the confluence of those of those two things. Um, so being at MIT really early on was, that was my immediate exposure into crypto actually. Um, after after I graduated, I actually worked in investment banking. So I was at Morgan Stanley. I was there for, for, for two years. Nice. Um, I went... I tried to start my own thing at some point, didn't really, uh, never panned out. You never heard of anything I worked on really, but, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta earn your stripes somewhere. Right. I ended up joining this company called cloud kitchens, which was Travis Kalanick's, um, startup after Uber, after he oh, wow. started Uber. Um, so I was there for, for about a year and a half or so. Um, I actually worked on that with a couple of the guys I work with now. So Brian was one of those guys. Santosh was another one of those guys. And we built that into a really large, like a nine figure business. So it was in, in like a, in like a year's time. So we built this huge business kind of under this like conglomerate, right? This like much larger company, right? Um, which means that it kind of goes not super noticed. Yeah. And around the same time as we were thinking like, Hey, like we'd love to go, love to go work on something on our own. Like we were pretty capable and pretty competent. Um, and this is around the time where like NFTs were very much, it was really brewing, right? This was like probably mid 2021, like ETH kind of started to see a run and yep. then we started to get into Solana. And where we really got excited was just like, I think for us, like we were crypto familiar, but we weren't, we weren't deep in it. You know what I mean? Sure, sure. So like, I didn't know about all the different chains and like using them and what the user experience was like, but I did, I had used like Bitcoin, I had used like Ethereum and it was generally not the best user experience or I was like, oh, this is super expensive. It's really slow. Yeah. Um, so when I got exposure to Solana NFTs, it was like DJ Ape Academy was one of the early drops there. Uh, we were just, we were like, whoa, this is actually pretty sick. You know, it was like the same kind of hype of like trying to get a sneaker drop or something like that. Totally. But like a really, I mean, it was, the Mint was actually a shit show, but that is, that is for other reasons. But yeah, from yeah. Like a chain, like a Web3 UX perspective, it was super smooth. And we kind of just, we just went all in at that point. Like we were like, all right, let's let's build something here. Like let's we, so we made like a really simple website and we did it in like it was like four or five days. Like I don't remember the exact amount of time. It was called Soul Analysis at the time. So this is before we rebranded or anything to hyperspace. Nice. Yeah, yeah. And we just got immediate validation from what we were working on. We had like twenty thousand people on our site uh, in the first week, 
And it's really funny because we worked on, we actually had work, we were working on other ideas prior to that, right? And like sure. one of them, for example, was like a, like kind of like a social app, like recommendations, which every, you know, the joke is that every founder like works on this at some point. Right. And uh, like, I would be like trying to like convince my friends who are like close friends. I'd be like, dude, can you just like, please sign up and like, <laughs> like, do, do, like do something on there. Like it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't take very long. I've been there, man. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't, nobody did shit. Right. <laughs> but now all of a sudden, like 20,000 people on the internet are like using, randomly using my website. So right. I think when you know, like there's traction and validation of what you're doing. And that was kind of the first, one of the first times um, where I tried to start something from scratch and like immediately got that kind of feedback. Um, and, you know, those are, those are rare moments. And it's definitely one that I, I look back on very fondly. Absolutely, man. As a, I, I'm a, I'm a, for, most of the chat knows this, but uh, in a previous life, I was a DJ and radio personality, and I, I definitely know the struggle of like, hey guys, just come to my party, just please come to my event, you know. Yeah. Uh, you eventually get there though, and you get thousands of people, and that's that's the reward. So definitely, man. So how did tell tell us more about hyperspace? Um, like how how did what was the original vision for you guys? Like when hyperspace formed, and and how has that evolved over time? Yeah. So originally, like, it's like I said, like, we threw it together really quickly. Right. And it was very much taking, like, it was taking advantage of the fact that, like, a lot of people were building stuff and, like, people were building, like, marketplaces and everything on mm -hmm. early on. Yep. But there was just a lot of gaps, right? Like, there wasn't, like, a place to easily see, like, hey, this is, like, how the collections are doing, like, a stats page. Sure. But we were like, all right, we're going to, it's going to look like coin market cap, basically. And but it's going to be for Solana NFTs. Like, that was, like, and that was called Solana Analysis. And we got that immediate validation and we we're like, where, where do we take this? And I always thought, you know, we always thought coin market cap was a really good case study of like, where can you take it? You Definitely. can really be like more of a data play, um, a consumer data play. You can be more of an infrastructure data play. You can be, um, you know, one thing I think coin market cap never did was really insert themselves into like the transaction layer. So everybody would go and check you know, they're like, quite, people still do, right? Like I do it even, I'll like, go sure. back, I'll like refresh the page a little bit. Right. <laughs> What's going on with the price. Yep. Um, but you never trade on coin market cap. And I, we didn't like that disconnect. Like it was like, Hey, that's a big miss. Like that's a lot of monetization that they never captured as a business. And maybe it was really early when they started, yada, yada, yada. They did probably did well for themselves, but, um, we were much we were being pulled in all different directions by the way like investors some investors were like and we didn't even take money yet but some investors were like you should really go this route some people were like you should do that some people were like please do this you know it was, it was <laughs> going in every direction but we said like okay um there's a lot of marketplace like at least for solana there's a lot of marketplaces competing and on other chains as well and where we can you know serve uh where we can really serve as a beneficial, uh, you know, layer uh, is sitting, you know, going a layer underneath effectively and aggregating all of those. And so that was like our original play and original vision where we were like, hey, we're, we're gonna be this aggregation layer. You've seen this in like crypto and in DeFi, very, you know, you have matcha and one inch and like, you know, whoever else. Uh, and it, and it's, it's a really, it can be a really, uh, you know, effective route because people will start to gravitate towards using that but there's always going to be the like underlying liquidity sources. There's going to be, we, we, we very much believe that there would be increased fragmentation. We saw a lot of fragmentation over time, sure. with, like, periods of consolidation, but then periods of divergence where like, okay, one marketplace was doing 90%, but then that split to 50, 50, like so on and so forth. Um, yeah. And then it was like, well, if NFTs are really successful, you'll probably have verticalized, you know, marketplaces. You'll probably have IP specific marketplaces, whether it's like, okay, this is like, a, these are music NFTs, these are gaming NFTs or whatever, or it's like, hey, Yuga Labs is like, I'm gonna have my own marketplace like just for my um, content. Um, I'm a game, I wanna have an in-game marketplace. Like there's a million variations that we imagined should happen if NFTs were to be really successful. Definitely. So that was very much our original, original vision. And it's been two years and it's been a time of, you know, there, there's been a lot of change in NFTs and nobody's really known which direction things are going to go. And so we've also like kind of, you know, not wavered so much as like navigated how the ecosystem has evolved. Yeah. To be like, okay, what do people want and what do people need? And like, how do we skate to where the puck is going? And so like pro trading was honestly a big, 
move, you know, for the industry. And it was one that I, I'm not sure that I was like, I'm not sure if it was going to work or not originally. Sure. Right. Like, Cause at some point I was like, okay, maybe it's just, this is just like a reskinned like UI UX of yeah, yeah. what we provide, which is already like, we were in like, we had all the most powerful indexing. Everything is real time. Like it's, it's very, a very functional, powerful platform. But it was like, okay, like, is, is this, is this what people are going to care about? Or is this going to like change how people view NFTs as like things of like, you know, things of value and things of scarcity. So um, we've definitely learned a lot along the way and like this, watch the space change, whether it was like the whole battle with royalties on multiple chains, or yeah. it was like this move towards like, you know, pro trading or AMMs or whatever else. And, you know, there's, it's still TBD where things are going to go, but you know, we're, we're here for it at least. So, well, and you just touched on pro trading. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that. Um, and you know, you guys just, just, uh, hyperspace Avox, we've been, we've been seeing all the buzz. So I definitely want to talk about the Avox NFT incentive program, if we could touch on that. Um, but just to piggyback off something you just said, kind of, kind of diverting a little bit, you guys are watching where things are going. Where do you personally see things going with NFTs? I mean, I know that's a broad question, but yeah, it's, it's so tricky because I, I think my predictions were much bolder like a year ago, or I was much more oh, totally. my older predictions like a year ago. Totally. And they don't, they're not so different. And it's, it really, I think it's really a function of time. It's like, is it going to happen in one year? Is it going to happen in five years? And then like from us, like operating a business, it's like, can we stay around long enough to like sure. benefit from it effectively? Yeah. Um, so I, I mean I think that NFT like we see so much investment going into like the gaming space, for example, to use like NFTs as like these like independent controllable assets, which is super cool. We see yes. NFTs being used as like modeling real world uh, re re any asset, like real world asset, financial uh, financial asset, a digital asset, but basically used being used as a way of like really cheaply modeling something that already exists. And then allowing for this like more native like interoperability of just something to say like okay um you know this represents a home or this represents a loan or this represents a you know this yeah. represents a bet or some a wager that someone made and like now we can create you can introduce liquidity you can introduce like people building things on top of this as a primitive um which is maybe the broader trend there is like tokenization um i very much believe that like tokenization is a trend that should that should continue for for what it enables. I think sure. it's one of the most powerful powerful trends that we can have, and it really is just a matter of like, I, I what I don't know is like I don't know what timeline that's going to like we're going to see that happen on. Right, right. That's always the question, right? And what somebody in the chat says, in game NFTs like Pulsar. Yes, we're big fans of the uh, the MMO RTS Pulsar over here. So definitely. And chat, just a reminder, you guys can ask questions. This is an AMA, so if you have questions for Cam, uh, please feel free to jump in and ask away. Um, I can't run the chat today because uh, obviously I'm, I'm hosting and interviewing and all that good stuff. But um, moving on, I wanted to talk about uh, the Avox NFT incentive program, man. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, it's something that we worked on very early on with, you know, or immediately with, with Avax when we were talking, yeah. you know, coming over here. And for us, like we always look for really unique opportunities to a really unique go to market opportunities effectively. Sure. And we were like, hey, like, how can we make as much noise as humanly possible? Yeah. Um, the idea of basically giving away millions of dollars to users was one that really, really excited, excited us. And I think a lot of people are like, I, under I understand why this is contentious, but um, I, I want to make it clear that like at least for in terms of like this grant or whatever, it, all of it is user incentives and community incentives and like project incentives. And it goes beyond yeah. anything even that we're doing. Yep. Um, but we were very instrumental, I think, in helping to shape, uh, shape what that looks like. And for us, like we were like, hey, like if we can get, you know, if we can get incentives in the hands of traders and collectors and creators, like now we can create a really positive flywheel here and like kickstart the ecosystem, which right now is, you know, a little bit muted, a little bit quiet, but has a lot of like, it has a lot of good ingredients for success in it. And that's something worth doing. And you, in the, especially in a bear market, you have to find big opportunities worth doing. And so like, 
you know, I still don't think enough people have heard about this AVAX incentive program. Um, it's, 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 it's free money for like a lot of people that they can, you know, and, and I also want to make clear that it's not, this is not like a blind game of like, Oh, let's like, let's burn as much, you know, let's throw away money. Let's burn right. money. Like right. we want to incentivize in the right way, as many people as we can to do the right, to do the right actions. Sure. And we're not going to like be, we're not going to be super, like we're not going to blindly throw it away. Right. So there's flexibility here. We've, we've like, we've tried to maintain some optionality of like, okay, this month we're really focused on like incentivizing these actions. And that might be really different the next month. Right. Like there may be a point where incentivizing, you know, liquidity on the buyer side or on the taker side is more important important than incentivizing it on the maker side. Right. Yeah. Instead of like what we did roll out with initially was, and it's still live, but it's not going to last forever is you can earn points just for referring people to the platform. Wow. Um, those are free points that, which are just going to end up being, you know, AVAX token. And that's the other cool thing, by the way, a lot of, a lot of people blindly give away or they give away points and you have no idea what the points are going to be. And sometimes, sometimes they're a little bit more, you know, descriptive or it's, it's more alluded to that, like, well, obviously they're going to launch a token and do yada, yada, yada. Right. In this case, I mean, we would love to do that as well, but we're very directly making these points tied to this like user incentives, which is in AVAX token. So for a user who receives the AVAX token, it's like very liquid, you know, it's like a very real, it's a very real tangible thing. Right. And I think once we get that first, uh, you know, distribution, um, so people later this month will be able to go claim with their points. They'll go be able to go claim AVAX, right? This month will be the first claim period. Um, once they see that, I think that this will really pick up pace, you know, because people will see like, hey, okay, they're, <laughs> this is real. There's real yeah, money yeah. and they're giving it away. So like, um, yeah, I think there, there's a, there's a lot going on here. There's a lot that we can definitely do better on it, um, but we're, you know, we're definitely starting from a period, like we're starting from a pretty, you know, there's not a hundred thousand people actively trading this every day. Sure. Um, so it getting the, the, the ecosystem like bootstrapped or kickstarted is, is certainly, it's been a challenge. Definitely, man. I mean, and then, you know, we're, but you're building in the bear, which is key, man. You guys, you guys aren't stopping. So I wanted to ask you, I mean, you've talked about it a little bit, um, as far as what hyperspace is, uh, as an NFT market is bringing to the table, but what, what did you not see happening, um, on avalanche marketplaces that, that brought you in? Like what was, what was not happening in iBox that you wanted to see happen and, and, and why did you bring it in? Yeah. I mean, I think that there was a lot from a feature perspective that we thought we could, we can be where we could be really different. That whole, the entire like pro trading type experience akin to like what let's say blur has done on, on ETH. Sure. Um, AVAX hadn't really, hadn't really seen that. Right. And so uh, I don't want to speak poorly of any of the uh, marketplaces that exist. No, I, you know, I'm just using that as a caveat to say yeah, that. Yeah, absolutely, man. This is the, we're, the vibes are high, man. We're there, this is a no hate zone. We we understand that. Yeah, it, it hadn't really, you know, this is kind of a, a hole. And like, part of it is like part of it is a feature thing, right? It's to yeah. say that, like, oh, okay, like, do you have you know the, the pro trading UI where you have like everything in the same screen and you're like, I can see the entire market and I'm sure. like, you know, it's almost like a Bloomberg terminal, right? Which is right. Cool. Right. Um, there, there's that, but I mean, a lot of it is also not features, right? A lot of it is like, Hey, you know, like the bringing in all the, all the, frankly, bringing in all the users, doing the rewards, like running this whole thing as a program. Cause like we're, I don't think some people maybe don't realize like we're constantly talking to every possible constituent, right? We're talking to traders. We're talking to collectors. We're talking to artists. We're talking to developers. We're talking to creators. If I didn't say creators already, we're talking to market makers. We, we speak to the avalanche folks. We speak to people in the ecosystem, right? Like we're Busy. coordinating across the board and we're talking to people across all chains. Like it's not yeah. on avalanche and we're not a big team doing this. Right. So sometimes we bite off a little bit, you know, we're drinking from the fire hose. We're biting off a lot more than we can chew in any given day. Um, but that's kind of what it takes. And so it's really just like a, uh, it's also just like an aggression thing, right? It's like, things were kind of quiet, right? Like there, there, there's that kind of like ongoing aggression of like, hey, we want to do something right. huge that can bring in hundreds of thousands of users. Definitely, man, definitely.
That's huge. So, oh, sorry, did I lose you there? Uh, no, did I cut out? Oh, no, sorry. I thought I thought something happened on my side. My bad. Um, well, speaking of collecting, man, as you can tell, like I'm, I'm a bit of a collector, sneakers, records, action figures, comic books. Yeah. Um, so like, let's say I'm just a total noob um, and I'm, I'm just starting to use hyperspace. What are some of the best practices and tips for NFT traders and collectors who, you know, want to use hyperspace? OK, in the in the least financial advice. way. Yeah, this is not financial advice, y'all. OK, we, that's that's been established. I mean, what I what I'll generally do. I mean, okay, so like at least on 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 Avalanche, like yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it probably helps to look for the collections that have like the rewards enabled because you'll you'll earn points for that, and it's not necessarily on all collections. We're trying to partner with as many collections as we can, concentrate liquidity, find the quality ones. Um, it's not to say other ones are not quality, but just like everything needs to line up ideally. And um, so, you know, find the right collections. I think a lot of it is indexed on the collections. Who are the people behind it? What are they working on? Like, right. um, there's a lot, you know, the space, is, has, the space has navigated a lot of like, does team matter? Does the roadmap matter, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. You know, you kind of have to start to find your, your own signals. And I generally will look for also people that I just like trust. Like, hey, who, who knows what they're doing here? Knows what they're talking yeah. about. Yeah. It's kind of on the inside. Like they, they know the teams well, they talk, they talk to everyone. Um, and then in terms of like trading itself, I mean, you have two, I think you have kind of like two options. You could be like, I'm a floor trader. So like, you're like, I, I just, I'm, I'm kind of indexed to the collection, you know, like if I, if I had an opportunity to just trade an index of this, I would, but like, I'm just going to buy the floor and I'm going to hope that the floor goes up and I'll sell it. Um, and then the, on the other side, uh, the, the, like the other kind of possibility I think is like really looking for just looking for like rares in the collection. The danger with rares is that they're generally less liquid um, than you know the floor because you can you can floor a floor like kind of at any given time. There's always a bid that you can you know sell into. Um, there's a lot more price discovery around the floor basically, um, but I think you can start to combine that. And so actually, I actually see this on Avalanche like the most. There's constantly like rares in the collection that are like on the floor, and I'm like, like that's an easy opportunity. Like if you're like. Right. Hey, I want to buy the floor. Like you yeah. totally buy the rare one. I'll see like a top 10% on the floor. And I'm like, well, I, I would buy that because if I'm going to go resell it later on and I list it at the floor, let's say, you know, I'm just going to list it on the floor again. Mine's going to sell before someone else's. Right. Sure right. It's, it's a rare, right? Um, but it, it starts to get tricky with the, with the rares. Like for example, on Dokio, I was looking, I personally was looking at the hollow masks recently. Okay. I really want one because they just, they just look super sick. There's yeah, a, yeah. There's a pretty good market around it. Like there's the floor is pretty high. Listings are not too high. People really love them. They rep them on Twitter. Right. Um, so I'm like, hey, I like I really want to get in on one. And I'm like just kind of waiting for the right one and like the right price point. If somebody wants to make an offer to me, like ping me, you know, send me, send me a DM on Twitter. Yeah. Hey, I mean, send me the link, man. You know, I'm I'm uh, now you got me interested. Uh, but uh, what I was going <laughs> to what I was going to say was that uh, it's cool that we just had our guy Beast Lorian pop in the chat. What's up, Beast? He's one of our Dexalot community members, and you know, we talk a lot about you know trading on it. Obviously, we're a trading platform, and you know, it's really cool to get your perspective on trading NFTs because we talk about trading tokens all the time. And now, yeah. you know, getting this kind of perspective is just like it's really great for our our uh, listeners and our viewers. So thanks for that, man. We appreciate it. It's really cool. Yeah, and you can. Uh, what up to everybody in the chat, Beast? We are taking questions, man. So if you got any questions for our guy Cam, remember just type it in the chat, man. It's good to see you in there, Cam. I felt like you were gonna say something. What's up? I was just gonna say, like, I think now we've also tried to add like these other market indicators, right? Of like we have price charts so that you can follow along what's going on with the price. You can kind of see where momentum momentum is. You can watch the order book live. Um, so like, okay, is there a serious amount of bidding activity here? Like, that's support the floor. Um, and then you can you can use our activity feed like okay how are sales trending are people selling into the collection bids are they buying the floor listing like which right. you know, is uh, uh, like which way are they taking or making um, and then you can actually apply the filters to like all of those components um, so if you're like I want to see just the price like what are the last ten sales basically for this one trait you can totally do that you just hit the filter apply it um, it'll automatically filter the listings automatically filter this. Uh, and then the only other, well, not the only other thing, but like one of the other things I'll generally look at is like also just like who, you know, who, who, who's trading, like who's trading, who holds a lot, like th things like that. Yep. Um, so we try to make as much possible via the tooling. There's a lot more that we can add. Like I, I could think of like 10 different 
charts or metrics that we can add into the platform. Yeah. Um, we'll probably add a couple over time. I, we, we don't want to like, we, we hate to have like an overwhelming platform because at the sure. end of the day, people use like the same three or four things as signal, yeah. but. And people who like NFTs are obviously like into design and aesthetics a little bit. So you want yeah, to make, yeah. make it clean for that aspect of it too, right? Yeah, exactly. Definitely, man. Definitely. So maybe you could tell us like, what are some projects you're currently really excited about? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I saw that you guys have sausages on there. That's our guy, Will. He's been on the show before. Oh Shout yeah. Sausages, man. We love sausages. Dude, their art is so good. It's still not minted. Hey, wait, I have to check if it's minted out yet um because we actually added them to reward so they have condiments and they have sausagers okay Condi right, right condiments get burned and they reveal sauce sausagers and the sausagers art is sick i think it's like really just like under underappreciated or maybe it's i don't know um and so we were like dude we need to like we need to like we need to t we need to be working with these guys like we need to be partnering with these guys um, no buns no buns no buns. We need to support the art. I actually got two of the girl ones, and I was like, "These ones definitely have buns. These ones specifically have buns, but otherwise, no buns." Um, yes, no buns. No buns except for the lady, uh, lady sausagers. But yeah. anyway, sorry. Continue. No, it's a, It's like th that one. That one's great. I think the art's fantastic. I, I, the mechanism itself is is really cool that they build for the you know the, the whole burn reveal. Um, if it's not minted out, you can always go mint a condiment and then go reveal it and like. I bet there's still rares in the collection that you can potentially go mint. So I think the condiments trade over the sausagers right now. The okay. sausagers are the ones with the trading rewards on our platform, not the condiments. So like trading the condiments won't really get you anything. Um, I think the condiments trade above because there's like an option premium effectively, right? There's option. Okay, right. Um, besides that, like, you know, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of collections that like, I mean, I could pull up from our site, like the ones that we've, um, you know, that we've highlighted. Um, the dog arenas are, are 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 really cute. Cozy is one that um, we're starting we're starting to work with. They're planning to do an upcoming mint. I think it's going to be really. If you want to share your screen, you can you can just hit that present button that's in the bottom there. Uh, or I have, if you don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. Hey, hey, can you share your screen really quick? Hey, uh, I have my like, screen, bro. <laughs> I have like thirty things I have to I have to close out. Oh, um, but I was going to put you on the spot there. My bad. No, no worries. Dokyo is uh, like another, like that's kind of the main one that we launched like a month and change ago. Sure. Um, and those are just super clean, super repable PFPs. Um, they're trading, trading well above mints when you combine the fact that they minted when AVAX was at like maybe nine dollars, um, and now AVAX is you know twelve fifty I think today. Yeah, um, climbing, getting up, come on. Yeah, so it's yeah. up like I don't know what is like thirty. 35%. And then yeah. the floor price is up from mint price. Like I think whitelist got in at 8.88 and right now the floor is maybe like 12 and a half and the guesser is like 13. So you have like 30% on each side that things are up. So it stacks up almost, almost to X. Um, so it's, it's doing well. There's momentum. A lot of people are starting to rep it. And I think like now they're going to start making an even bigger push, um, like pushing out a lot of like cool content. Um, it's just like an, e but it's an easy brand to align with. And then, there's a couple other collections. I, I don't think I can, I don't know if I can say it yet because yeah, I don't think I can say who yet, but ones that we're going to mint on our platform, like on through our launch pad um, that are definitely worth paying attention to. They're super cool. They have really good art. They have really good branding. Um, and then besides that, honestly, where I've been really trying to get myself like more familiar with the ecosystem. And I even tweeted about this recently just to like engagement farm a little bit, but really just to like kind of see what people care about. Um, I mean, AVEX has such a strong like gaming ecosystem, dude. And so many people, you know, building games here. And I'm like, these NFT, like we should, <laughs> we like NFTs is like an easy opportunity for them to either get either user acquisition, use like usability in the games themselves. Right. You used to, you would see this with like other NFTs on like ETH or whatever else where people like, I'm going to go, you know, there was a mix of people like, I'm going to buy this to use it. I want to buy it because it's like a relic or like, I'm going to buy this to just um, speculate on it. And so I've been trying to look at like, who are the top ones? Um, I know chicken is like kind of a, you know, kind of a, a, a hot in this, a hot in the, on, on AVAX right now. Right. Um, but like in terms of like maybe the bigger studio games, there's like shrapnel, for example, for example. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Pulsar. Yeah. Pulsar. So uh, I'm like, really 
I'm trying to find out like where their NFTs are and like when they're, or when they're planning to launch something. And if they're not, I'm like, we should get you to launch something because um, they just have so much, they have so much attention. They have so yeah. much like, you know, leverage um, and like NFTs are such an easy play for them. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we get a few of those out and like, hopefully you guys start to get excited about it. Cause it's like, it's, it's, you know, there's very natural utility for an in-game asset. Yeah, I mean, and I think the craziest thing we had uh, uh, Garrison from Avalabs on recently, and I think the cra craziest thing to note about Avalanche Gaming is, um, as an entity, it didn't even exist a year ago. You know what I mean? Like they've done all this work in less than a year, so pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, like you're saying, man, the gaming space is going nuts right now. So that's really kind of where it's at. Sorry, one of my producers just sent me a message. Forgive me, um, but uh, I did want to ask you. Um, we had uh, we had one of our our community admins uh, request this. Uh, do you notice any difference about NFT use interactions on EVM chains versus uh, those on other kind of chains? Hmm. In, uh, interactions in terms of trading, or interactions in terms of like, like what kind? Like what use. Kind of Sorry. Like just, just just general interactions. I don't know. Maybe the ch chat can help me out because I didn't submit this question. <laughs> but um, but yeah, we could skip that one, man. If you uh, if you're if it's not, uh, that's uh, not one. yeah, I think yeah. Let's maybe we'll circle back. We'll circle back to it. Yeah, we'll go back to it. So I gotta ask you, man. We were talking about music a little bit earlier, and chat. Remember, you guys can ask questions if you got any. Um, but uh, so. I used to be a DJ and, you know, before, before we let anybody go, um, I got to get a music request from you because we're going to play a little bit of music at the tail end of the show. And we were talking about Mac Miller a little earlier. Um, but I wanted to kind of piggyback onto that while you're thinking about your request. Okay. Are there any like uh, NFT music uh, projects that you can put the chat up on? Because that's mm -hmm. something that I've been interested in, but like our team uh, hasn't really steered me in the right direction on those. What, what would you suggest? Yeah, that's okay. I'm, and this is where I'm going to do a potentially bad job because I feel like there's people I'm connected to that work on something related to music, but I will say, and hopefully this is not insulting to them. Like I haven't really seen like the music NFTs take off super well. Like I know Audius was like a huge platform working on like music, uh, like web three music and like NFTs. I saw someone just put like sound.xyz. Like yeah. there's definitely a bunch of big names what i just don't follow it super closely and i just yeah. i think there's been that there's been a like lack potentially lack of product market fit for the music and music nfts right now because i don't know like sure. for these platforms where they're like oh you can like kind of publish i guess in a decentralized way sure I, i'm not i'm not familiar i love music but i'm not familiar with the music industry so yeah, like, yeah. see i am and so that's why kind of why i was a little interested in um how you see it because I feel like there is something there. I just don't know, I guess for personal reasons more so I'm asking you because you know, I'm interested in like, what, what does that section of the NFT uh, industry need? You know what I mean? Like what, what do, what is it missing? I guess. So it's just more of me thinking out loud, but I wanted to poke your brain on it while I got you here because I'm personally interested in that um, just from my own uh, stuff, but sorry, what were you going to say? No, I was gonna say like we we have spoken to a couple artists and like pretty like big ones like people you would know and I won't say who because like it's you know it's it's not my place to say I guess uh, yeah yeah, yeah. we didn't end up working on something or publishing something but um in a lot of those cases we would work on something more related to them as a like as a brand and sure. as a means of like fan engagement um so they were very much like hey like how can I have like how can I connect with like how can I know who my biggest fans are and connect with my biggest fans? Like what would be, cause I know I have a lot of fans, but like, you know, like yes, one fans, number one through 1 million kind of look the same to me, right? Yeah. Like exactly. they're, they're all just, they're all like an, some random number. Um, but who are my fans one through 300 or some, you know, something like that. And like, yeah. can I use NFTs as a way of like maybe building that as a community, tracking what they do, connecting with them, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that's a very, you know, solvable problem. What it's not is like, oh, this is like a song that I've like minted as an NFT and like right. put on chain. Right. And I don't, 
my only fear, and it's not fear, but my only concern with that is like, I just know that like whenever there's so much of a process behind it, like there's a whole industry and there's like a thousand middlemen and like whatever else. Yeah. Opportunity for disruption or whatever, but it's also never that easy. Like that, that person's agent is never, probably never going to let them do, no. you know, well, I, like I said, I do know the music industry a little bit and they will claw tooth and nail to not give away money to people or make sure that they have a hundred percent ownership of all the assets. You know what I mean? So yeah. yeah, it is kind of a, it's kind of a slippery slope, but I'm just kind of, like I said, I was, uh, my own interest in the, uh, that topic. So kind of, kind of wading into the conversation, but it does look like, uh, the chat's helping me out with our former question. Okay. For that last question, since trading on ETH mainnet can be so expensive compared to Abox sold. Do you see a difference in how people are doing trading on the more expensive networks for, versus the faster, cheaper ones? Thank you, chat, for helping yeah. out your boy on that one. Yeah, I, I can I can answer I can answer that one very directly. Um, on the cheaper cheaper trains uh, chains. Sorry, the, <laughs> don't know where that came from. No, you're in New York, man. You're thinking about getting on the train after this. Yeah, on the, it would be nice if it was a cheaper train or faster at least. But yeah. um on the cheaper chains we definitely see like just just there's so much extra activity that's yeah, yeah. for example we'll see like a, there were points where we we're getting spammed with bids whereas like you know hundreds of thousands of bids in a day sure and it's actually really cool when you think about it because you're like wow i can go do hundreds of thousands of bids um but now let's say you're a platform that indexes all of that data right like that's re actually it's actually really expensive to like store and it really slows down your system to sure. parse and store all of that data and it starts to become design question like an in like infrastructure design question of like should you like should you index and store all of that data and uh you know there's a trade-off that you, that you have to make and so like we've 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 done it and then we said like hey we have to like we have to filter out by some sort of criteria for certain types of bids because like we just see like a handful of wallets just like trading aggressively or just doing so much activity aggressively. And again, it's it's only possible because trading is so, so cheap, which is cool because that's that's what you imagine with like, you know, the future of finance, right? It's like, right. oh, that's possible. Like you can get that like NASDAQ, you know, Solana always describes themselves as like the, like they want to be like the NASDAQ of crypto, uh, like Web3 NASDAQ, whatever. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but like that, that is like now that starts to actually be like within the realm of possibility that like you can have that much activity in actions or whatever. Um, so it's it's uh, it, it can be it's cool and it's but it's also can be tricky for, you know, for builders. Definitely, man. Thank you for that. And thank you, chat, for, you know, adding on to uh, non tech minded Jim's question over here. I appreciate you guys. Um, well, I, I want to ask you, man, have you had a chance to think about, you know, what song requests you'd like to hear in the mix when we, when we take things out? Oh, I, um, you said you, 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 you complimented the Mac Miller, which is like so, scored extra points complimenting the Mac Miller anthem that I love to play I, uh, every time on the show. <laughs> I love, I love that song. Yeah. I will say, I, I hope this is not like controversial. No. Um, I'm actually probably more of an Anderson Pack fan than I am a Mac Miller fan, just because I think he's like he's like a virtuoso, man. He's crazy. He's musically insane. Yeah, he plays the uh, drums. I mean, anybody that plays the drums and sings, I'm always very impressed with that. Like any playing an instrument and singing at the same time is impressive, but keeping a rhythm and doing a melody at the same time is crazy to me. You know what I mean? So. Um, I guess on that note, like, yeah, I, I'll take another Anderson talk. So we could do come down. Oh, dude, I was going to play that. I was going to say, what about come down? Yeah. Perfect. And there's the remix with, uh, I think TI on there, but we'll play the original. We'll play the original. Okay. Um, yeah, man, that's a great request. That's a great request. So cam, I just, I just want to say, man, this has been awesome. Like, thanks so much for coming to the show. Yeah. Would you, okay. would you, uh, be down to come back to in the club and do another AMA sometime? Yeah, dude, this was super easy to do. It was super chill, and there's good music here, so like, good. It's a good club to come back to. Yes, exactly. That's kind of kind of what we were going for. And you know, you're in New York. You know, you. I'm sure you've had some good club experiences. I I know the clubs out there, and you music know, makes some, a huge difference. Music makes all the difference, man. It does make a huge difference. And let me tell you, move in the Midwest. The club owners here, they don't have. They're not plugged in like that. They go, oh, they uh, they need a big TV over here, and. Uh, you know, they'll hire some garbage DJ and then they wonder why their club is closed in less than a year. You know what I mean? So yeah. anyway, but 
This is Cam, guys. He's the co-founder of Hyperspace. And, you know, before I let you go, man, is there any our, – our chat loves alpha. Can I get you to drop any Hyperspace alpha before you go? And if the answer is no, it's all good, but you know I got to ask. Uh, I – the the best out the best like I could give random alpha the best alpha I could possibly give you is that like we have a really large incentive program we're giving away, <laughs> we're giving away we did, and guys we did talk about that if you missed all our talk about uh, the hyperspace Avax NFT incentive program go back to the beginning of the episode skip the mix all right go to about ten minutes into the show the twenty mix. minutes into the show. Or don't skip the mix. Cam says don't skip the mix. All right. Yeah. I appreciate it. But if you want to get the alpha, you want to go straight there. Watch the VOD after the show's over. Go right into the 10-minute mark. Hear about this incentive program, guys. We love incentives over here. We have the Dexalon incentive program. We just started our new Chi. We, we called it the DQ incentive program. You like that? It's a nice frozen tree for you. Nice. And then, of course, we, just, we AVAX multiverse incentives. We got all kinds of incentives. And so, guys, if you like alpha about incentives go back to the beginning of the episode once the bod is posted man cam thank you so much dude this has been awesome uh we yeah. gotta we gotta have you back on very soon man this has been a lot of fun talking to you likewise this was great man thanks for having me for sure man we'll talk again soon and uh that was cam everybody